Hey, what's going on guys? Kel Mike with TheEasiestBusiness.com. Uh, an update on my courses. I'm actually going to be teaching the course for everybody who signs up for it. So uh, I've taught a few people already. Uh, excited to see what that future brings. But today I'm going to talk about uh, how to read an architectural scale, how to, how to pull measurements from, from blueprints, from drawings using an architectural scale. Because if you do not have takeoff software, this is the single most important thing that you need to learn how to use if you're going to print out blueprints manually. And this works for any trade. This is not just painting. This is plumbing, carpentry, drywall, anything. This is all uh, transferable, if you will, to any trade uh, on, on basically any set of drawings. Most of the time you're going to want to print out your drawings in a tabloid form, uh, 11 by 17. That's the measurements of the paper. It's about, uh, you know, this wide this long so they're not full size uh, prints but they are pretty big it gets you closer to the real thing so and if you need to you can go buy an office jet 7740 i believe they're about 250 bucks at least they were a few years ago when i bought one and then you can put it in your house paper is pretty cheap save money that way you can print them out on that and then you don't need software but if you're doing a bunch of jobs a year you do need software but that's a different video and um Anyway, so let's just get right into it. Uh, I basically broke this down into a couple sections. Ignore this section at first. Let's just focus on what an overall floor plan would look like. So this is like a building. I've obviously labeled it building. And you have your two side measurements. So a lot of times when you're looking at a top down view um, on drawings, it's going to show like what looks like an, a long I, right? Like a capital I, if you will. Where these two lines intersect here, where these two lines intersect here, that's going to be the start and stop point for the measurements they pull on the drawing. So many times the, the architects will give you certain measurements on the drawings uh, for reference. So if this is the overall floor plan for the overall building, they pulled a measurement from here, which coincides with this corner, to here, which coincides with this corner telling you, and this number here tells you that 200 feet is the, is the, the length of this building, and 150 feet is the length of of this building as well. So it's 200 by 150 feet. You could obviously multiply those two together to get the total square footage, but that's not important at this point. So why I told you to ignore this earlier, um, these are your reference points here, which I've labeled at reference points. This is gonna be a rendition of your scale. So your scale has many different sides. You have a one and one half inch, you have a three eighth inch, you have a one half inch, a one eighth inch, a three thirty second inch, um, and then you just have a standard 12 inch ruler on this side. So you have many signs. What side do you use? Well, it all depends on what lines up here. So you choose which side of your scale to use by what most closely matches your, your measurements here. So I did a very quick and rough rendition of what the 332nd scale looks like since you can't read the numbers up close here. So, but if you do get a scale and you look at these numbers, it starts at zero and there's little ticks. And then the first number uh, listed is four. The next is 8, 12, 16, 20. So it goes by fours all the way up to 124 on this side of my scale. Um, so what you want to do is, and sometimes you won't always use the 332nd scale. It always depends on what matches up best. This just happened to be the side I use uh, to make you uh, understand uh, these, these measurements right here. So anyways, I'll go to my 332nds. Um, I, didn't, I'm, I didn't obviously have time to list out every single number on here, and I didn't have room. This would have to be, you know, uh, the size of this whiteboard if I wanted it to uh, be like exactly like the architectural scale. So basically, but I drew this point out to show you that when I put my zero up on this scale to measure it up on this line that the architects made for me, it, it only goes to a hundred, but it lines right up with my hundred. So how does that make sense? So now everything, now I know that everything I measure with this side of the scale if, if this 200 was actually 100 on my scale, I know I need to double every number. So you need to have a pen and paper, and let's say you have uh, a 10 foot room by a 10 foot room, but you measure it on here, the scale is gonna say it's five foot by five foot, but you know from pulling the measurement off what you knew was a correct measurement earlier, that you need to double that number. So if you don't have any measurements for that room, but you measure it and you get five by five, it's actually 10 by 10. And so when you're when you're measuring things on the drawing, it's important to remember what side of the scale you're on 
and you can always write at the top of your paper that you're doing your estimate on, you can always write double the scale. Sometimes you have to triple the scale. Sometimes you have to divide the scale by two, but that's a basic explanation of how you get 200 out of a scale that only goes to 124. You measure it and it goes to 100. And then you know you need to double all your numbers that you pull off the drawings to make sense. So let's just say I go to the 1 8 inch scale. I'll put it up here. From zero, it goes to 76. I wouldn't use that because 76 doesn't go into 200 evenly or it's not close enough. If it was like 51 and I could times it by four, that would make a lot more sense than trying to get 76 into 200. I hope that makes sense. Um, and it becomes easier with repetition. So the 330 seconds here would make the most sense because it goes to 100. This number is 200. Um, and then I can just double everything uh, that I pull from the drawing. So I hope that makes sense. I try to keep it short, sweet, and concise. Uh, but sometimes I can't always break things into simplest terms, especially when I've been doing this over five years. So let me know if it made sense in the comments below. Go follow uh, my TikTok if you haven't already, uh, theeasiestbusiness.com. Go check out my website, free proposal. Uh, for those who need it, for those who don't have it, enter your email address at the bottom of the page at theeasiestbusiness.com. It'll email it to you automatically. Go check out my courses if you need some coaching, and then just uh, let me know what you think.